Is there a difference between weather and climate? Well, weather is... And I guess climate... Hmm, that's a really good question. Let's ask a few experts. Weather is what happens day to day, hour to hour. We can't really predict the weather more than seven to 10 days out because it's a chaotic system. But we always know that the summer is gonna be warmer than the winter, and climate is similar to that. Climate requires looking at pattern, where you are, and uh, what is driving that pattern over a much longer period of time than weather. San Francisco 49ers just threw a 50-yard touchdown pass. Does that mean they're going to win the Super Bowl? Absolutely not. That 50-yard touchdown pass was weather. Climate would be, how do they do for the whole season? So no one play defines the whole season. You know, it's only one play. Climate is what we expect. Weather is what we get. So climate is long-term, looking at decades or more of information. And weather is short-term, today, tomorrow, next week. Right, and scientists study both to understand what has happened in the past, what's happening now, and what could happen in the future. I'm a meteorologist. Meteorologists look at the shorter time windows and kind of narrow it down for essentially where we live. So we focus on weather over the next three, five, seven, ten days. So we look at whether or not it's going to rain, how strong the wind's going to be, what the temperature forecast is going to be. In order to make weather forecasts, observations and data gathering are, are crucial elements. Because we need to know what's going on to be able to say what's going to happen. And meteorologists use lots of different tools to gather that data. Thermometers, rain gauges, anemometers that measure wind, hygrometers that measure humidity, and buoys out in the ocean that measure waves and wind speed. And then satellites and radar that can measure all sorts of things, like gases in the atmosphere or its temperature. The meteorologists take all of that data about current conditions and bring them into a model. No, not that kind of model. Computer models to understand what will likely happen over the next several days. That forecast goes out to the public and to our emergency managers. Our forecasts are really based on making sure that you have the information to stay safe and to make the right decisions to stay safe. So if meteorologists help us prepare for storms, floods, and heat waves, then what do climate scientists do? I study ice sheets, specifically how they're responding to changes that are happening in our climate. In the Ross Ice Shelf, it's a couple of degrees below freezing. For a project that I was recently involved with, we wanted to look at how fast the ice is melting when it comes into contact with warm ocean water. And when she says warm, it's all relative. We're talking a few degrees below freezing. <laughs> to get to the ocean under these ice shelves, we make holes through the ice sheet. There are small holes, just like a couple feet across, but very deep. Then once we have that hole open, we can lower instruments through the ice and measure what the ice is doing and what the ocean is doing where they meet. The instruments that we use um, measure things like temperature and salinity and current velocity and how fast the ice is melting. Despite the cold weather, Carolyn's job studying ice sheets sounds so amazing. But what does that have to do with climate? The amount of water that ice sheets store is equivalent to 200 feet worth of sea level rise. That's a lot of water, and given that the CO2 we're putting into the atmosphere is warming both the air and the oceans, we have to look at how the ice sheets are going to respond to that change if we want to predict how much sea level is going to rise. This is where I live. How can we use the data that scientists collect to be ready for sea level rise. Data in and of itself is a point of information, but what is the story behind it? My job is to help the scientists translate their results to policy and decision makers. One of my favorite visuals about sea level rise is a picture taken during king tide. King tides are the extreme high tides we see every year in the winter. We have a photo contest, and there's a picture of a kayaker that is obviously in a parking lot. And that's what's going to happen every day in the future with sea level rise. It's a really powerful picture that you can then use to explain the data. So better understanding sea level rise will help us keep our heads above water. And don't forget about the billions of other people around the world who also live on the coast, who are and will be affected by flooding and storms. Okay, 
So I think I've got it now. Weather forecasts help us keep safe today, tomorrow, next week. And climate projections help us plan to keep safe in the next decade or two. Here you go. Oh, thank you, I really need this. 